Sweet. Well, today we're talking more about, hey, let's create runs on the bases. Like, how do we create runs on the bases in that first step of base running? Tomorrow's going to be more about the base stealing and, like, what's a base runner, base stealing. So before we even get into it, we've got, like, what, five? Is it five special guests? Four or five? A bunch of base running people coming in. Um, Coach Sheets, you may have seen some stuff on Twitter. He's like the Kim K of the baseball world right now, it seems like. You've got um, – Tellerico, the, the base running coach for the uh, Yankees. Uh, Gillum, I think his name is, for South yep. Mountain. Latimer, or Latimer, Nate. Nate, yep, I'm just going to call him Nate. He's with you, Jake. And then, uh, oh, who's the other one? Oh, Anthony Pla, Lincoln University. So there's going to be five guys coming in here talking about us. So tomorrow may be more. It's going to be more than an hour. So you can plan to stay as long as you want. You don't have to stay for the whole hour, half, two hours, however long it takes. But if you want to, feel free to come in and, and do your thing. You guys are all in there already. So I saw Pam mentioned, hey, do we have to RSVP? You're good. Just sign up. Are you already on the link? Just click the link and you'll be good to go. And that's same time. Everything's same time. We're just going to let them take the floor. I'll introduce it. I'll kind of moderate it a little bit. And then from there, let them do their thing. If they want to share screens, let them do it because I'm interested to kind of see their perspectives on some of this base stealing stuff. So tomorrow we'll get into more of that aspect. But today's more about hey, how do we create runs as an offense by base running. Base running is one of the most underrated tools, I believe, in all of sports, like just in general. In baseball and softball, like it is one of the most underrated weapons that we have. And I think base running creates like so many runs. And, and we talked about it with the kids, but it's more applicable here is some of the best teams in the world, we win the one-run games. And one-run games are usually determined by 90 feet. And 90 feet is usually determined by base running. And just to, just to kind of preface that, a few things that are, if you go into the non-negotiables of hitting, well, you think about some non-negotiables of base running, running hard, running with our head up, and knowing the game, which means know where your outfielders are, know where the infielders are, know what count it is, and, and pick up your sign. Some of us as coaches are probably sitting there at third base sometimes and like going crazy because our, our hitter doesn't step out to look at us. And we just practiced it the day before, which might have happened this year. And at first base, the guy's already got his lead, and they haven't even looked at me. And I'm sitting here like, dude, we've been, we've been practicing this the whole time. Like, let's go. Like, pick up your sign, pick up your outfielders, take your lead, and let's go. So just to preface that, I just want to kind of add that in there because I know some of us may be like, well, how do we get our athletes to buy into the base running? Because sometimes it's just, quite frankly, it's not as fun as hitting. And it's not as fun as throwing a bullpen or as fun as doing a competition. But making base running a competition is also a great way to get the athletes engaged and encourage them to – maybe take the base running side a little more seriously. So let's get into just some, some different things that we can do as far as like the fundamentals of the base running aspect of, of getting on base one and two, like where do we hit the base and all that good stuff. So I think like the biggest thing is teaching our athletes to one, hitting the front inside corner of the bag. And we all probably know this stuff, which is great, but it's always good to have a good refresher. Like one hitting the front inside part of the bag after a base hit, trying to get to second base. Um, and that's huge. And I don't care what foot you hit it with. Some of us teach left foot. Some of us teach right foot. I don't care. Be athletic. Ronnie mentioned it a lot with the hitting aspect. Hey, let's be athletes. Let's teach our athletes to be athletes and encourage that. So um, whatever foot that may be, encouraging them no matter what part of the bag or what bag it is, hitting the inside part of the bag is huge. Creates a good direction to the next base. Two, Jake, you'll probably touch more on this, is aggressive turns and aggressive secondaries. Like when we hit that bag, let's force them to make a throw. Let's not go too far where we're out there in the middle and, and we're, we're stuck in the middle, but let's be aggressive and get 10, 15 feet off the bag to force that middle infield to make a good throw because we can take that extra 90 feet if they bobble a little bit or they kick the ball in the middle infield. Maybe you've got a lazy middle infield that you're playing. We can kick the ball, boom, we're good. We can get that extra base, which sets us up. We'll get into the percentages later on. Um, but those are just two things I wanted to throw out there about rounding the bag. Um, as far as, as that goes, and running with your head up, like encouraging them to be their best coach. Because they, if they want to rely on us, cool, that's great. But guess what? They can't rely on us all the time. Sometimes our feel may not be as good, or maybe they have a better feel of their speed, how their legs feel that day, where they're at mentally, physically that day. And maybe they can take an extra turn. And Adam, if you can show that video here in a little bit later as well with that Lorenzo Cain um, towards the end, of just how base running can win games and spark this insane momentum for our teams. So just getting a good understanding of, hey, let's teach our athletes to, one, get out there. Like, let's get out there. Like, let's, let's, stretch the, let's stretch the limits 
I want our athletes to fail, especially in practice when we have a controlled environment and if we're able to do scrimmages too. Um, some of our travel teams, if we do scrimmages on the weekends or against each other, inner squads or high school, maybe high school, uh, JV and, and varsity are playing each other or in college, we've got a scrimmage going. Let's encourage them to get out there and fail, whether it's stealing, whether it's running bases hard, let's be over aggressive and then we can always tone it back. The worst thing is having a team that's just, I'm okay with a single. I'm okay with the stand-up double. I'm okay with just getting maybe just that little hit, and I'm good. Like I, I'll just cash it in. It's all good. If you start putting pressure on that defense, what happens? We're on our heels. When the defense is on their heels, there's more mistakes that are going to be made, which allows us as an offense to take advantage and create runs as a team, which is going to help us get one step closer to our mission and winning. So, um, Jake, I'll kick it off to you, but I just wanted to kind of preface it a little bit with yeah. just a, a little bit of that base running aspect of just being aggressive. Like, just encourage them to be aggressive and fail, fail big. A lot of the time, some of our athletes are scared to get off the bag or they're scared to get a big secondary or big lead in fear of getting picked off or getting thrown out or back picked. And I think if you just allow them to say, hey, you can get further than you think you can, whether it's a lead or your secondary, you can get further than you think you can to stretch the limits and push the defense to be a little more on their heels. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, the route that we're going to go with you guys, coaches-wise, it'll be a little bit different than players, is um, from doing a bunch of coaches' evaluations, one of the biggest things that I think is undertaught with coaches is base coaching, like positioning and understanding of where you should be based on situations and when to send versus hold and some of that. Um, so I'm excited to get into that, that kind of stuff, as well as some practice drills that are fun but really good for base running, too. Um, you know, Austin mentioned we'll get into base stealing tomorrow and I'm this, this lineup for tomorrow couldn't be better. I mean, they're incredible. They'll be able to answer a ton of questions. Um, it won't be as applicable to softball, um, stealing bases just because they're going to talk through different types of leads and that kind of stuff. But I'm sure you'll get something out of it if you're still able to join. Um, but from the base running side, you know, there's, there's a few things and Adam will talk through the non-negotiables, but there's a few key things when we go home to first. Um, that we really try to hammer home. Number one, if they put them all on the ground, they still need to find the ball. So we don't want them run. We don't want them running, staring at the baseball. But when they take off out of the box, they do need to peek and find the ball. Because if that ball gets through a fielder and it's in the outfield, um, we want to take a turn. We don't want to be running through the bag. So it's important that they do peek um, and that they do run hard. And then the second thing, you know, a lot of times they rely on our first base coach in order on an overthrow to go to second. But, you know, as a coach, sometimes it's too late. If they're waiting for you to say go, sometimes it's too late. So one big thing that we emphasize a lot is hit the front of the bag, break down. We had a great question from, from one of the players because we talked about when you break down, we want to sink our hips, right? So sitting in that chair, almost sink our hips and break down as quickly as we can. And that head has to go over your right shoulder. Because if you see an overthrow, that's where you're gonna be able to see it, is over that right shoulder. Um, if they don't look that way, by the time that they notice the ball was overthrown, it's probably too late to take that next bag. So really, really important um, that you do that. And a lot of that from the coaching side comes from you reinforcing that at practice. So one thing that we do, any base running drill that we do, they, they have to do it to perfection. So if we're going through a cycle drill, um, and I have a few drills I can pop up here in a minute, but if we're going through a cycle drill and we start, Hey, home to first on the ground and they break down improperly, they go right back to that line. They don't get to move to the next one until they do it correct. Um, because if it's not reinforced at practice, then in a game, they're not going to care about it. So, and I think base running is an easy one to not reinforce well, um, because sometimes we use it as conditioning and it's just, it's not like the sexy part of baseball or softball, right? Like everyone wants to hit, they want to make cool plays, but you just think you go four bases and you go when the ball's hit and it's not that simple. So that would be a big thing to reinforce, but I'm excited to get into some base coaching and some things on that, but I'm going to pass it off to Adam here to go through those non-negotiables um, and get talking through some of that stuff too. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll just add to that, that, um, I th we at least I believe that out outside of the major league level and, and maybe the college level, I did, I've never coached at the college level, so it's hard for me to say. But if you're in high school and uh, you are or in youth baseball or softball and you're operating under like the station to station mentality and not giving your athletes the ability to try to be athletes and take those extra bases, I think you're playing with a big weight on your back and uh, you're uh, not allowing 
yourself to be as uh, successful as you can. So if you don't have a base running strategy, um, let's start developing one, start coming up with some ideas and some stuff to be able to communicate to your athletes to try to take those extra bases. I said in the first, in the first class that I'm a big believer that getting free bases is uh, oftentimes the most, uh, the biggest determining factor in who wins a game. It's not just out hitting the other team, but how can you operate on the base pass to take advantage of the other team's mistakes and putting pressure on them? So um, if you feel like that's lacking from your game, uh, you know, get in contact with us. We'll talk even further about the stuff that we do as far as base running concepts. There's no way we could go through it all in an hour, but at least in the beginning, we'll give you some of our absolutes that if you guys can follow these and, and harp on these to your athletes, then maybe that'll help you along the way. So the first things that we always say is to our kids is always know where the ball is. Uh, you have to know where the ball is, uh, uh, no matter whether or not you're coming out of the box or whether or not you're on the base pass already, because um, it allows you to know when you need to uh, can be more aggressive in trying to take that extra base. Jake talked about, you know, when you're getting out of the box of peaking. Obviously, we don't want the kids watching the ball and watching the play the whole time, but know where the ball is. That way they can recognize ball direction ball speed and who the ball is going to and what they're able to do as far as getting extra bases as far as that's concerned. Um, I know you guys probably all use this one, but it's never make the first or last out of third base, primarily because uh, with two outs and we have somebody on second base, um, uh, then that is we're always usually one hit away from trying to score somebody there. So making that third out at third base um, is, a, is a definite no-no and uh, obviously the first uh, out at, first at third base as well. Um, another one is we always, at least for our teams, we try to find a way to second base when we have two outs. If we have a runner on first base or, um, you know, we try to find ways to put pressure on the defense and either get dirt ball reads or be a bit more aggressive with our stealing to try to get them into scoring position. That way we are less than two hits away from getting that run in. That's one that we always do. And we always let our runner, our, our hitters know, like if you're up and there are, there's nobody on base and you get a routine single you need to be coming out of that box like something's going to happen that's going to allow you to get to second base there's going to be a bobble there's going to be a lazy pickup and a lazy throw because we want to try to do everything we can to get you to second base and get in a scoring position with two outs that way it's less than two hits um, always tag up on third on a fly ball with less than two outs and make sure that you're communicating. Jake can go into detail as to why communicating to your athletes to, again, keep your eye on the ball. Don't watch you as the coach. Okay. There's some very specific reasons why, but watch that ball being caught and then they make the read. You just let them know whether or not they need to stop, but they come off that bag tagging up as if they are definitely going to be scoring, make it to where it, always make it, tell them to where you have to hold them up, okay? And then the last one, and this is, in my, in my opinion, the most important one is making sure your athletes understand that to never assume that a routine play is going to be made routinely, all right? As soon as you do that, you miss out on the opportunity to, to take free bags, and that, to me, is one of the most frustrating things, uh, and that's where I have to try to make sure I keep my cool on the base pass as a base coach. <laughs> if, uh, there's a free base that was not taken. That's one of the one of the biggest things is, you know, if they hit that routine fly ball to center field and they just dog it out of the batter's box and they don't even get to first base, but then that ball is dropped and now they only get first base out of that, that is the worst thing that can happen, especially when you have two outs. Uh, I'm a big believer in trying to win those small percentage plays uh, the, so the small percentage ones are the ones that happen the least amount of time. But I believe that those ones that happen the least amount of time are oftentimes the ones that turn the tide and that change the momentum to your side. So if uh, there's two outs and there's a routine fly ball hit the center field and he drops it and your, your base runner's on second base at that point, it's a very good likelihood that that runner is going to probably find a way to score because that pitcher is going to be frustrated. The outfielder doesn't want that next one to go to him. And then that batter has a ton of confidence. We're probably going to find a way to get that guy in. So never assume the routine play will be made routinely. If you guys reiterate those things to your athletes while they're on, on the base pass and uh, they're, they're going to be a better position. And I always say this is over communicate. Repeat, 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 like say the same things over and over again, because no matter how many times you've told kids, like when it's bases loaded in less than two outs is to freeze on a line drive. Even if you've said that once or you said it a thousand times, there's still so many times guys get doubled off. So you might as well just, in my opinion, over communicate, you know, and find different ways to get those points across to your kids. 
Yeah, the communication yeah. piece is huge, man. I mean, I don't think we can we can ever communicate enough. Like you're just continually grounding into their head where this is part of our philosophy, and, and it's a conversation. I think Ronnie mentioned earlier, uh, yesterday or the day before, that hitting's a conversation. Well, so is base running so is defense so is pitching the game is a conversation we can learn from it maybe one of your athletes is wondering why why do I got to take my lead from the back part of the bag at first base well this is why we want to make it tougher on that first baseman especially me as a right-handed first baseman to tag that runner out gives you an extra step which you get that extra half inch and now maybe you're safe at second base you you lead the league in stolen bases rather than coming up second place so I think just hey, everything's a conversation is huge Ronnie what do you want to add to any of that yeah, so when we talk to a lot of our hitters about about base running, I always say that, that the outfielder has to stop me from continuing to go. So I know we talked a little bit about um, making sure that they're making a play on it and they're getting the ball back in. But for me, a lot of times, even when, even when I, I was base running, it was I'm going to go to second base no matter what out of the box, period. It, but if he comes up clean and throws a seed to second base, then I'm going to stop. But I'm going to continue to go until he stops me. And I remember there was probably three or four times in the season and I know that we'll get into this more, but there were three or four times in the season where the, the right fielder, the center fielder just barely bobbled it. And I happened to be in stride and continuing to run and I was safe at second base. So now I don't have to think about stealing a base. I don't have to worry about getting myself to second, whether I'm trying to find a ball in the dirt or a pass ball or wild pitch or something like that. I'm already there because I was aggressive on a play that the center fielder couldn't make. Um, and, and a lot of this, and I'll even say it for Jake and Adam, I know we mentioned in the last group, but I know for a lot of us, we do a lot of base running stuff and we overlook it because sometimes those plays only happen three or four times in a season. But I notice that they always happen in big games and they always happen. And we'll, and we'll show the Kansas City one here in a minute. But any time that it was a base running um, situation or for me, it was like a back pick situation or something that we practiced a lot but never happened in the game, it always came up in a playoff, championship, conference final, anything that mattered that's when they come up. So we have to put a lot of focus into those. Otherwise, we're not going to be prepared in the big game. And then we're going to go back and, and then want to figure out why. Um, so I'll kind of leave it. I'll leave it with there. But we want to make sure that the base running is huge every practice because it's going to come up in the most important situations. That's absolutely huge. I love that. I love that. And just being aggressive, right? Like teaching them, hey, let, let's take – let's make the outfielder stop us. Let's, yeah. let's force the issue. Let's put them on their heels. Let's, let's – Let's go for the extra bag. Let's be aggressive and let's fail. If we fail and we get thrown out of second base, I'm okay with that. As a coach, I'm totally okay with that as long as they can tell me why. What I'm not okay with is trying to take a, a random steal with two outs and you're on second base and our four hitters up and you're trying to guess jump the pitcher's lead when, we, when we're down three runs in the fourth inning. Like, I'm not okay with certain things like that. That's when we really need to have a conversation. But I think the biggest thing, if we can encourage them to be aggressive, and a coach said to this or said this to me, when I was in college and he said, you can't be half pregnant on the bases. You can't be half pregnant. Like you can't, it's impossible. You either go or you don't go. You're either hundred percent certain and you go or you don't go. And if we get onto the ball and dirt deal, which we can definitely get into is you've got to go. You see ball and dirt, you go. If you, if you didn't get that good jump, shut it down. If you're stealing and we'll talk about that tomorrow, but if you're stealing, shut it down. If, if you don't get a good jump out of the box on a base hit to left center and you don't think you can make it, shut it down but we can't be half pregnant. We've got to either know we're going to go for it or we've got to understand, Hey, I'm just going to stay here on this time. So I think I just want to add that in and say, if we're going to be aggressive, let's understand like why that's important because if we get caught in between then we have indecision on the base pass and that's going to lose games for us, especially those one run games that we want to get into. Um, I want to talk about just mention one thing about two outs leads at second base, but we'll get into that a little later because I have an interesting philosophy and I want to see what you guys, I'm interested to see what you guys think about this too, because uh, it totally baffled me, but let's show the, the video of Lorenzo Kane while we're on this subject yep. about running the bases hard and knowing where your outfielders are and why that's important. And also just understanding the situations in the game. And, you have it up Adam, still, Adam? Yeah, I got it. So if you want to set it up, I'll pull it yep. up here. So this situation was ALCS Royals were down a game. Um, eighth inning of a tie ball game and Lorenzo Kane, who is a very fast runner is on first base, right? So before Adam plays it, a couple things to note here. Um, when Austin used the term soil, which a kid brought up last session, which was awesome, which stands for sign, right? Get your sign, check the outfield depth and location, check the infield depth and location, and then get your lead. Okay. So Lorenzo Kane's on first. He's clearly done that based on the read. Um, and Eric Hosmer's hitting. Now it's a two, two count. Okay, so when we talk like total baseball IQ or softball IQ, he's actually fouled a few pitches off. This is pitch number seven of the at-bat, 
which means on the average of um, about 28 seconds between pitches in Major League Baseball, every fielder through seven pitches has had over two and a half minutes to make a determination of, hey, if this ball's hit to me, here's where I'm going with it. And the ball's hit to right field to Jose Bautista, um, and you'll watch it play out. We'll show it a couple times, so I won't give it away. You got somebody in a Royals hat that's probably grinning ear to ear right now, knowing what's about to happen. But you can watch this play, and then we'll talk through it. But we'll just enjoy some baseball for a minute. It's like the closest thing to live we get. Here you go, guys. Here we go. So Hosmer squares one up down the right field line. But for say, and when the base, Ryan Royals end up winning the game. This so again, talk through the uh, killing it. <laughs> so there's a few big things to note here. Number one, look where he's touching the bag. Right. Austin mentioned it before, inside part of the bag. He's inside part of the bag. Shoulders are already squared to home plate, which is incredible. And everything's leaning forward, so he's trying to get to max speed. But what I love about this, and this kind of there, – there's two things to this. He doesn't slow up, right? So there's no hesitation. There's no indecision on 